Political gladiators are plotting against the dictates of the new electoral act. And row dippens over Tompolo's 48 billion naira pipeline surveillance contract. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Until the Nigerian political actors resolved to play by the rules, the electoral debacle in the country's democratic system would continue to get worse. This narrow-mindedness played out recently when some National Assembly members, governors and other politicians willingly decided to break the Electoral Act of 2022 by aspiring to be candidates for their political parties in two different positions. Also recall the former president, Electoral Commissioner, a resident electoral commissioner, I beg your pardon, in Akwaibom State, Mike Igini, had warned that politicians who procured multiple forms were criminals and risked two years' imprisonment. Well, joining us to break this down is Kunle Lawal. He's the executive director of the Electoral College in Nigeria. And, of course, Wahab Shitu is joining us via telephone. He's a legal practitioner. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Mr. Shitu, can you hear me? Great. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm going to start with you, Kunle. Um, a lot of Nigerians fought for the Electoral Act of 2022 to be amended, uh, even though there had been, of course, some back and forth as to what was in it and what was you know, taken out of it. But then with what we have, Nigerians would be celebrating that, oh, this might um, point to a free, fair, credible elections to an extent. But then we've seen this double dipping by certain members of the political class, and this calls to question if the Electoral Act in itself was good enough. Um, I, I don't see a problem with the Electoral Act. I think where the major problem is, is that the National Assembly, um, if I could be quoted, passed a bill that they obviously didn't read. Um, and this goes to the point that first they, were, they took out um, delegates, statutory delegates, which was them, out of the equation. And, you know, going to the president two days after I was assented to the bill that, that you passed to ask for, you know, a re-amendment of that particular bill. And the president, of course, did uh, refuse to budge. Mm. So it's, it's clear that you have a National Assembly that didn't read a bill. So you can find them, of course, on, within the, the uh, precipice of, 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 of trying to truncate the same bill. Now you have um, a clear act that says you cannot pursue two different polit uh, political positions in one electoral year. And you have the Senate president, who is actually the highest legislative office, virtually uh, trumping that and, and breaking the law. And it comes with a two years imprisonment uh, clause. And nobody has done anything. They're still trying to fight for their positions. Governor Omahi is one of them. Quite a lot of them around Akwabio too is within the same system. They bought presidential forms and also still got uh, forms for within the uh, legislative house. So it doesn't make sense if you put this bill down and you're the one uh, trying to uh, corrupt it. But you know, of course, because we've not activated the recall system in Nigeria, where people are a little too shy or scared to recall uh, to try to recall their representatives. That's why I think they still sit down because they do not have immunity. Hmm. Um, Mr. Shito, you are obviously a, an officer of the law. You are a, 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 a legal practitioner. You would understand this better. Um, one would ask, I, I mean, Kune is saying that you would, the recall process would also play a part in, you know, um, reducing the number of people who take advantage of, you know, the Electoral Act of 2022. But what can people do in the interim? I mean, we've seen the clear case of Governor Aquabio. Um, who's a former minister. We've seen a clear case of the, the sitting Senate president. We've seen the case of the governor of Cross River State, Ben Ayade. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are several other people like this. And, and the drag between them and their placeholders. What does the law, what can the law do uh, other than, you know, what the act is presenting us with? I'd like to know is uh, is a law that is designed to regulate the conduct of elections to ensure the elections are credible, fair, and free. Mm -hmm. 
But the law is one thing. The attitude of the political elite is another. So uh, attitude, I can say, is, is everything. So I think is if the electoral act will work to the extent that the political elite allows it to work. And this brings us to the issue of rule of law. We must be we must be ready to enforce the provisions of the electoral act, no matter who source is killed. So no matter your settle your standing in the society, we all are bound by law. So the political actors must be ready to follow the provisions of the electoral act. Otherwise, we should be ready to apply sanctions. Mm. So it is important, it is important that these uh, provisions in the electoral act are only good on paper. What is important is the, is the will of our law enforcement agents to ensure that the provisions are not only implemented, but rigidly enforced. But, but why would I so want there to... there must be a regime... Okay, I'm so sorry to talk over you. Of Yeah. Hello? I'm so sorry to talk over you. I wanted you to land before I come in. So, how do you how how do they enforce it? Because it, again, it's one thing for me to make a law, and and of course, it's another for it to be enforced. But that, why would there be sanctions? Who's going to put those sanctions in place? Is it the same people who are breaking I, this law? I, no, you see, I met is the body charged with the responsibility of supervising our election. Mm -hmm. when, there is, when there is any wrongdoing, I know must furnish the evidence. And then the police, mm -hmm. another law enforcement agent, must enforce. So the, the issue is, I make will provide the evidence while the police will enforce. Interesting. So I feel there is a consequence for violations. Okay. And the electoral act will not be able to be effective. Okay. Back yes. to you, Kunle. Um, we see how vilified um, the wreck in a Kwaibom state has been uh, in the past months. He's been dragged in the media. Um, they've called him all sorts of names. But he still, st I mean, for those who know, you know, th this man, um, Mikey Guinea, he's been known to be one that would not waver in any way. He, st you know, he stands his ground. But he's saying that what has been happening is criminal. And there are people who are advocating that he be removed from that office. He should be, you know, dismissed. No, even though he's saying, look, this is criminal. This should be implemented. This should be done. And just as Mr. Shitu is saying, INEC and um, duties end at some point. And of course, it behoves on the police to do their job. But do we see that happening? Okay. So for me, looking at everything, of course, um, INEC is quite, it has stated clearly that um, these particular people are not those running for office. INEC put out a press release. But where I think it's critical to be able to turn or to receive some power to the Electoral Act of 2022 is if Nigerians, who, are, who of course assume themselves politically aware, know exactly what's available within the Electoral Act. And for me, that's where the problem lies. So you have a lot of Nigerians that discuss politics publicly and privately, but they do not understand in which concept the Electoral Act is directing and where it's not directing. Mm. And then this problem not only is is strictly related to the electorate. It's even worse that those in political par parties are totally oblivious of the laws that are available in our land guiding what they claim to practice. Are you sure that they're oblivious or they do not care? They're no. two, two different things. Okay, so, so interacting with political parties, one of the things I think I've noticed the most is that first, they don't care, especially for those within incumbent parties. Then secondly, they feel the system has run a particular way since 1979, and some people have participated. And it's shocking that even the so-called new breed 
uh, are inheriting the exact traditions that are passed down. So our, mm. ir our irresponsibility towards law or statutes that are put down or the constitution in general is inherited by the so-called um, new politicians. I, I've, been heard, I've been heard to say clearly that the only difference between new and uh, old politicians is that the new ones can use Instagram Live. Wow, uh, that 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 in itself is uh, it's almost a blow, a, a low blow for <laughs> the young politicians. But then, it's interesting to note that we all pushed for this, and then you're saying we still didn't even read the text in this particular act that we pushed for to even know if we have a problem. Now, what is most shocking is that the people that passed it didn't read the text. The people, that, the people that they passed it for haven't read the text. And the people that are supposed to enforce it don't fully understand the text. This is a total quagmire. So, you know, for people that keep saying Nigeria's constitution is faulty, this is that. I always tell them most people have not looked at the Electoral Act or the Constitution. Where the problem lies is that we've not looked at it. And then it's not even implemented to about 35 or 40 percent. So therein lies the problem in which we have as regards almost everything we do. Mm. Mr. Shito, Kule is saying that we have too many laws and we, we barely even understand these laws, let alone pushing for its implementation. So I come back to you with the question that I asked earlier on. How do we get, including the police, uh, you know, law enforcement that he has also, um, you know, tied up in this particular um, ignorance game. He's saying that, you know, those of us who were, these laws were passed for, we still don't fully understand. The people who broke the laws and passed it don't also fully understand, uh, let alone the law enforcement agencies. So wh where, where does this leave us? Because again, how are we getting ready for a general election um, with a, 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 an act that we are all jubilating over uh, as something that would help us to grow or improve our electoral process? Mr. Shutuke, are you talking to me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I really cannot hear very well. All right, let me ask the question again. So Kule is saying that we are somewhat in a quagmire where the people who passed that act did not fully understand it. Those of us the act was passed for still do not fully understand it or even have, some of us haven't even read it. And of course, the law enforcement agencies that are supposed to enforce it also do not fully understand. So where does that leave us going into a general elections in a few months? Well, I think what is critical is the need for political education. We need to break down the electoral acts and get those who understand it to really, to really interpret this provision to all, including political actors. So education, political education is key. And uh, political actors but we're ready to play by the rules. I, I don't think it's fair to say those who promulgated the electoral don't understand the provision. I think they do. I think what they, I think they are not, uh, uh, understanding the provision is one thing. Willingness to, to abide by the provisions is another. And that is why the issue of enforcement comes in. I know one plays no role. The political actors will play their own role. The enforcement agents will play their own role. And the, the public, the public, the members, the electorate must also play, play their own role. I think if all of us are, are, are determined to enforce the provisions to the letter, violations will be there are minimal. Hmm. And then the uh, politicians. We've been forced to play by the rules. Interesting. Uh, let me come back to you, Kuni. I wanted to ask him something about the uh, MBA, but I will come back to that. He's talking about education, voter education, citizen, civic education. And, and, and to be fair to the media, a lot of that is being done. But I always remember that this onus is also on political parties, which, if you ask me, I hardly see them do that. The NOA is another kettle of fish. I never want to mention the NOA because I don't know when they're going to come alive anytime soon, maybe sometime in December. But there is a lot that needs to be done. 
the media is just one part of society. Yes, we're the fourth, ex uh, fourth estate of the realm. We have our job cut out for us. But where does the political party come in? And of course, civil society and people like you, the Electoral College, how do, we, how do we go above and beyond? Because it's, it's like every election cycle, we have this conversation. So what do we do? Oh, and then it happens again. And we say, oh, well, we tried our best. How can we get above and beyond? So um, number one, a democracy cannot function except it has a politically literate uh, population. So for this to work, it's the reason the Electoral College Nigeria exists. We've driven quite, we've gone down. We are not even playing grassroots. We are going back age, 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 uh, that's age wise, going back to kids and trying to lift, uh, educate them with, you know, a little teeny book on the constitution, your rights as a Nigerian, mm -hmm. what the, what the tiers of government do, what the fourth estate is supposed to do. I'll be honest, in Nigeria, a lot of us do not even understand what exactly goes, goes on and I'll give an example. So but we're in Etiosa LGA right now. Most people do, are not aware that uh, federal government has a location to Etiosa for a, a, a month. Every month, a particular amount is sent. Now, the exact particular amount that is sent, Etiosa residents do not know. And we feel from these little levels, then you can go up to the bigger things. You, you don't start with the Electoral Act, which is quite complicated. Mm. The first thing we need people to understand, number one, your local government chairman do not have immunity. Then, you know, start to influence. Then they start to ask, okay, so they don't have immunity. How much is coming to Etiosa? Then I'll tell you 405 million comes to Etiosa every month. And then we start to build on that. So the NOA, as, as we've said, is mandated with this, with offices in 774 local governments. The, has the NOA taken it? No, they've decided not to act in this man manner or try to do anything within these parameters. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the work is massively on the Electoral College and a few other large CSOs that are working within the system. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this uh, loosely here. Uh, we, we've seen civil, civil society organizations, in quote, um, be very political, you know, especially when it comes to the campaign seasons. Um, and so it takes away from the education that we're expecting to see. Uh, and we see more of people speaking for a political party or a politician. So again, is that not somewhat of a dereliction of the duty that you owe society as civil society? Yes, I, I understand this and I see this with a few CSOs. Um, the Electoral College has remained nonpartisan. Um, if you check my public opinions, I refuse to mention anything. And I, I, I've stated clearly, uh, I personally will speak for the Electoral College Nigeria. I don't, I might, my choice of candidates is not public, and um, how I vote is not public. So what we try to do is always bring out, you know, issues concerning four candidates. Like we did a, a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, and and threats to the four uh, top four candidates. We we eventually will do coming down to the top 16, the 16 and eventually. But we've done the first four and we will keep doing things like that. Um, I, we can't really, like I said, most Nigerians do not understand uh, what politics is. And one guilty part with a lot of other CSOs is that there are people who have never been actors in politics. So they don't even understand where the fence is and where not to jump over the fence. So mm. therein lies the problem. Finally, um, Mr. Shitu, uh, when we talk about the... I mean, we've talked about the civil society, we've talked about the NOA and all of the people that are saddled with responsibility. How about those of us who barely have an idea or even want to get involved? Don't forget that there is a chunk, a large chunk of people who believe that politics is a dirty game. Some people feel that their votes don't count. Some people feel that they don't even need to know who their local government chairman is because it doesn't change anything because they're a government to themselves. And I'm asking this because... Um, and I'm asking this because, you know, it's very easy for people to say, I buy, I, 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 I mean, I get my own water, I produce my, I get my own light, so why do I need to know my local government chairman? Um, quickly, how do we change that narrative going forward? Well, changing the narrative yes. is that if, if people desire the kind of, the kind of government they have, I think uh, I think uh, part of part of it, the way of ch changing the narrative is what we are doing here. Mm. We need sensitization. We need greater we greater communication, greater uh, constructive engagement, and then greater enlightenment. I think people must change their mindset. Mm -hmm. 
Everybody is playing politics, one way or the other. What, did, what these leaders do affect us. What we do will also impact on the society. Mm. I think we have to change this attitude of I don't care, I don't care. Because it affects us all. Yes. Well, I want to say thank you. Um, Wahab Shitu is a senior advocate of Nigeria, and he is also a lawyer. We want to say Kunle, thank you so much. Kunle is, of course, of the Electoral College of yes. Nigeria. He is well, I, I need to correct the impression. I need to correct the impression. I'm shortlisted as a son. Oh, you're not a son I'm yet. I'm not a son. Oh, okay. So you're a son in waiting. Yeah, well... <laughs> I, I've been going for a few interview. I've not been selected yet. Okay. So pray for me. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Shitu. Thank you so much, Kunle, okay. for being part of the okay, conversation. Okay. All right, we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about the 40 billion Naira uh, pipeline um, contract that was given to Tom Polo. And, of course, the row that he has brought across the country. Stay with us.